All right, so here we are in the studio right now. It's a little, little quick update for everyone. The past couple weeks, I've been dealing with a weird neck nerve kind of thing, and it's been uh, it's been really tough. I'm updating this Friday live video, which was actually two weeks ago almost now. Mickey Luongo from Storm joined us, and he was an awesome guest. We asked him a bunch of questions about uh, lane conditions and uh, the new IQ release and astrophysics. So enjoy. Please uh, click all the things and hit all the buttons. Thanks for stopping by. And yes, sir. Mm. What day is it? Friday. What's that mean? Live. <laughs> yes. Welcome everybody to Friday Live. This is a special edition. We're coming at you at three o'clock instead of noon. Uh, excuse my hoarseness of my voice my horse horse voice Horseness. yeah i got like a little like weird thing going on in my neck and uh, i'm not dying or anything i don't think so i mean we are, are all we're all dying every day every single day of our lives yeah. yeah but so before we get into this special guest which um i don't think i have said who it was yet we're gonna do we're gonna do the days first days first because we yeah we gotta we gotta rip through this all right so today june 14th uh -huh. yeah. it is national flag day flag day so go america Go America. America. Awesome. awesome. America. It is also International Bath Day. Take so if you don't take, take baths, bath. if you don't take baths, today is the day to do it. To like today. To soak in dirty water. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So apparently, like, this is just like, it, it's an internet, it's not even national. The entire globe is bathing today in baths, not showers. I don't have a bathtub. We have a bathtub, it's kind of weird, I don't like you know, don't really dig over? it. Yeah, of course, of course. Because okay. when you shower and bathe with friends, you save water too, so. Yeah. All right, so then we have National Bourbon Day, right, huh? Anyone, any bourbon fans out there? No, no, yeah, there he is, there he is. It is uh, Arnie's birthday today. So in the year 1775, the uh, the U.S. Army was, was born, was created today. That many years ago. How many it? people? There you go. How many people were in it? Who were the original? What, like 20 dudes? 30 yeah, dudes, George maybe? A couple hundred? Yeah. Huh. There you go. And then a year later, we just going on up there. So. Bang. See, that guy's got facts over there. Facts. Um, that's Mr. Uh, Mr. Country Alfonso back there. Maybe we'll bring him on in a minute. Uh, it is wear blue today. So wearing blue, wearing blue that supports men. And also, I didn't know this, you can have like a wear blue fundraiser to uh, and then uh, any proceeds go to like colon cancer and different things like that. So okay. that, that, that's pretty neat, right? All right. It's flip flop day. No. I don't wear flip flops. I can't do it. I got weird toes. They're not like gross weird toes, but they're not like good oh, weird toes. Are they long? No, man. Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I would show you, but it just take too long. So flip flop day, it's strawberry shortcut uh, short cake day, but I feel like we already did. Didn't we just do a strawberry? Sh or no. They had a custard pie, whatever thing. They had like a, a lemony something thing we did also. I could have swore that the strawberry cake day we already passed. Uh, it, um, it is Pop Goes the Weasel Day. What the heck is Pop Goes the Weasel Day? Is that just a day that everyone sings Pop Goes the Weasel? Because like, the weasel goes pop? Right. Pop Pop Goes the Weasel. Third the base. Weasel? Third base, right? The, the, the white dudes, the hip hop I don't white know, dudes? I just know the song. Third base. You guys don't remember? Who remembers third base, man? Come on. Wow. Thank wow. you. Right. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. MTV J yeah. or yo MTV raps. Yes. Dude, I just, I just yes. remember the song. Yes, it was awesome. The, yeah, the song, right? Yeah. yeah. I'm old. Then we have um, New Mexico Day. So everyone from New Mexico, this day is for you, New Mexico. What about Old Mexico? Yeah. Old Mexico doesn't. They probably have their day. AKA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mexico. No, that's the Day of the Dead, right? No, that's Fifth of May. No, Dia de los Muertos is Day of the Dead. I always, I always do that, man. I don't know why I do that. Yeah, yeah. So is that actually Mexico's day, though? Yeah. When's the Mex Mexican so the Independence? Yeah. That's what Mexican. Th so yeah, the. Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. It, I was right. Oh yeah, you were. So there you go. So that's Matt over there. You know, you all know this Matt. Is the no one cares. This year, Matt was correct. <laughs> so we have. Uh, so those are our days. So do all that stuff. You know, happy birthday to the army and wear blue. Don't wear flip flops. That's ridiculous. You shouldn't be caught dead in flip flops. And strawberry shortcakes, right? You wear flip flops? No. Exactly. <laughs> See, thank you. There yeah, you go. Yeah, I know. Um, so this week, this week, let's get back to a sensitive subject again. We had no honor roll. None. No one, no one shot anything because everyone is too busy complaining about it. Oh. That's what it is. They're just like, oh, you know what? I'm going to just complain about the lane condition. 
and make it look like I can't score on it so everyone knows. You know, Hold like you it's, want, it's probably the lanes. You want to turn the lights off and get deep? <laughs> should we? <laughs> we, should, we probably should, man. Oh uh, yeah, but yeah, it's just like it's like a constant. You know, once again, I said it last week or the week before. We're not we're not trying to make it hard, man. We're like it's a recreational shot. I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. Cause like for for four weeks they're like, dude, we can't hook it. So then a couple weeks ago we 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 pulled it back, we shortened it up. Now it hooks too much. It's like one foot, like one foot changes, and I, I don't know. Anyways, but so no honor roll today. Sorry, hi Nicole. Um, and now and now, drum roll. Oh, sorry. Our special guest today, joining us from not Utah, because from New York, Mickey Luongo from Storm. There he is. Look at this guy. So um, he's already been very, very clear that he does not enjoy this at all. Not really. No. Well, good. So take it away, Mark. Let's go. Yep. No. All right. So speaking, of, so I've I've only got a couple questions. So I'm not gonna not gonna drill you. Lane conditions. No pun intended. Where were you born? <laughs> Oh, uh, you're, oh, you're gonna fire away first? Okay, Middletown, New York. Nice. Yeah. Nine, there you nine, go. Nine. There you go. Not to be confused with Middletown, Connecticut. What size are your yeah. tires? <laughs> <laughs> they are 35 nice, by nice, 12 nice. and a half by 17. Nice. Jeep guy. Jeep yeah. love right there. What's your span? So, I actually ended up growing. I didn't realize that like in the middle of your life almost you could grow. Right. And uh, right. yeah, it's uh, so now I'm four and a half by four and nine sixteenths with uh, zero zero. You're the zero zero guy, right? Yep. Yep. How dare like, you take yeah. that? Yeah, so How just, dare you take that? <laughs> I'm the zero zero. He's a copycat. Uh, technically, you did do that for that was like, yeah, no, I, was, I, I think did that laziness, to be honest with you. He just, he just didn't want to put the pitches in. I just really wanted to smash holes and balls and get out that's there. Just, just go throw them. That's, that's how yeah. I do it, yeah. That's my dude, my span is 4 and 9, 4 and 11. So, yeah, I'm only an eighth, eighth close, longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's crazy. Well, our hands were actually close because when I put my hand into your ball, what, last year, yeah, I was like, hey, yeah. is, whose is this? And you're like, pretty darn. Yeah, that's my ball. Yeah. I, I actually like shorter spans. I do. I'm, for the I'm longest, done with questions. I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> for, the, yeah, yeah. for the longest time, I actually used uh, four and a quarter by four and a half with a quarter forward. And um, it was just to kind of prevent me from grabbing it so much at the bottom. But uh, yeah, just I don't bowl as much now, so I don't really so need not to. Like, like fine tuned as you are. Exactly, were. you know, just kind of keep it neutral. It, it kind of started because of the matchmaker, believe it or not, using the matchmaker bowling balls, and uh, I was like, you know, this is all zero zero, and I'm using the four and a halfs anyway. We so get it so the often. Heck? The guys that come in, they're like, oh, I need this pitch and that span. It has to be exactly. But then they show up for like a demo or a matchmaker, and they throw everything fine. Yeah. What? Well, Hey, good. What is this? I'm like, dude, it's eights and zeros. That's it. He's like, what? No way. Can you switch all my stuff? Because a lot of people are actually in that neutral zone anyway for the span length. So to be at just a, you know, have a thumb that's just at, you know, just a neutral zone, zero, zero, you know, they come out of it at the right time, right at the right portion of the swing. So it ends up helping a lot of people more than they realize. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Knowledge. Nasty span is only four, six, uh, four one sixteen. Quarter left and quarter reverse. Yeah, he's like super, nasty. super short. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's, he's a big dude. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's and old. Stu, uh, Stu Williams, chat, no, uh, Schlem posted his uh, his sheet this week. Yes, yes. You saw that? Yeah, and it was like, yeah, four and four, four and sixteenth, six right? Four and three sixteenths. And, and Stu's a, Stu's like a pretty big dude. Yeah. Like he's got a pretty big yeah. mitt on him now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we Anyways, got the new logos. We got those new guys. You know? Oh, um, well, with the superhero ones. Superheroes. Yes, right. yes. So squad RG all day. I got a fun fact. <laughs> fun fact. Ernest Dodic. Uh, What'd you call me? Er, uh, <laughs> Ernest the Ernest, you know, the main man in the home yep. office there. Uh, he might not want me to say this, Whopper. but uh -oh. his, uh, his <laughs> span length, I believe, is like three and a half or three and three quarters. Wow. Yeah, he's, uh, oh, my so goodness. we call him Monster Mitts, but yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Junior, that, you know, Junior, he's shorter than you. <laughs> I think, is, isn't three, set, three and it's seven right eights? Here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. Your child has a bigger hand than that. <laughs> His fingers are two and a half. There you go. There you go. Start somewhere. Yeah. So, so <laughs> back on the rails. Right. Um, overall, what what is your? You don't have to get too deep into it. On a, on a house shot or, or uh, the lane conditions in general for for recreational league. What are your feelings and what have you heard? Like you go around all over the Northeast. You talk to a lot of pro shop guys. Talk to a lot of uh, just proprietors in general. Mm -hmm. What what do you what is your opinion overall on on what we can do as either either in the pro shop as coaches or as like owners of, of the bowling alleys concerning the house shot? It, it, it's like that one topic that everyone is so 
just burnt on like that red button that you just don't want to hit um so we're trying <laughs> to do we're, instead of having a proprietary house shot we've tried to put out stone street which uh. we've been very very open about i mean i i've put out the, the graphs for it and i figured like I'd rather do something like that than just have like a Callahan's Bull Rim, a shot number, blah, yeah, like blah, blah. typical house shot. Right. Yeah, yeah. What are your feelings? Well, it is definitely, there's a lot to it. I mean, in my opinion, there is a lot to that. But to kind of, I guess, to sum it up a little bit, would really be, I guess, and one, one aspect of like uh, league morale, you know, almost just how, what's everybody's attitude in the league and are they used to doing a, uh, or having a more difficult pattern out there and do they, what's their knowledge level? Every house seems to have a different, um, you know, general like bowler IQ in a way. A sort bowler of a IQ. Way. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a great way to yeah. look at it, you know. And uh, there's some centers that I go to where, like, knowledge is just like here, for example, where they're just pumping out a bunch of information, just kind of keeping their bowlers updated and understanding what's going on. So, for some place like that, it's really uh, you guys do a great job maintaining the lanes, keeping everything running clean. So the bowlers are. You know, they know what's going on in the industry. They know the center is being well kept. So they, if they have a rough night, for the most part, they at least can kind of, there's not too much to blame it on besides themselves or maybe their old equipment. You would think, right? You would think. Did you hear that? That's not the way it works. That's yeah. crazy. But, but now in other places, now if you were to go to some of these other centers that I go to and it's just kind of, you know, bowlers are out there just doing their own thing. There's really not much information. Um, man, you wouldn't believe how upset they can be. And that's yeah. what really kind of takes down a center. Uh, when I used to have Pennsylvania uh, as a part of my territory, there's a lot of like mom and pa type centers that old are, machines, you know, like 16, running. 24 yep. lane type centers, and you know everybody in the center averages 205, 210, but they're out having a phenomenal time. They're just enjoying the night. You know they understand where they're at, but it's also a lot of the proprietor, the pro shop guy, the manager, all going out there and allowing everybody to say, "Hey, listen, oh, you're having a rough night. Well, let me help you play the lanes a little bit because you were right. shooting 170, but I'm gonna get you to 205 now. So now it's a 30 pin increase. You know, 35 pin increase. People are happy. So it's just kind of in the grand scheme of things, I would say the key is to really make sure that your league and your bowlers, all of them are up to date with information what's going on in the industry and also uh, you know help them out you know keep them all on a positive vibe keep them on a good note you know you don't want to mm. just leave them in the dark people, people are hard it, to please it, here it, when it comes to that it's the squeaky wheel man yeah. i always tell it's there's always going to be a group of people that are never going to be happy with whatever you're doing well of course of never course. ever and you can't you can't change can't change everything you're doing for 10% no, no you have to look at the 90 and if if you get those guys that barely ever say a word and then you can kind of be like, all right, maybe we should you know, change something or whatever's going on. But I don't know, you know, I, I wanted to get under the thumb of the of that connotation that it's this guy who is friends with that guy who runs the lanes, who knows the pattern and he slipped him the paper with the, which is ridiculous. I mean, you can be the best golfer in the world and someone can tell you every sand trap and they can, they can give you the whole layout of the entire course. And just because you know that, if you're having a bad physical swing day, you're just missing, you're not going to conquer it. Even if you have all the information right in front of your hands or fingers or whatever, you're still not going to really achieve much on it. That's, uh, that, that's, that's what I think. I don't but know. that's 100 percent true. And I guess the only thing that you could do to really uh, counteract that to some degree is by giving, you know, fun facts out to the bowlers fun that, fact. that are things like when we did the uh, back in 2000 I want to say eight or nine we did an 18 point study with the USBC and we found out that uh, room temperature is more of a variable on ball motion than uh, yep. static weight and start to a certain extent so now those are things where you know the center goes from 68 to 70 degrees two degrees of variance now the lanes could change completely that's not you that's not that's but not some them, places but that's a fact of what happens on the lanes um, in 2010 we did a road trip series with uh, Kegel a seminar series and uh, they gave us a, tr a tremendous amount of information regarding how fast oil depletes off of the lane even when you're only talking about 10 people bowling on a pair of lanes across one game which you know 10 games I guess you could yeah, say yeah um, about 30 to 40 percent of that oil is gone it's non-existent on the lane anymore Wow so now when you start looking at where we're putting out how many units X number in the middle blows apart it's not there anymore now you're hitting you know just a few yeah you, know, you hit these cliffs these yep. over unders yep. so again these are facts that are nothing to do with you know the issues this is just simple what happens with science and the nature of bowling so I think that's really what we can do to help the customers understand what's going on out there and that was my next question I would say what's like the one tip 
for uh, either us here and anyone that even people that are watching after like if you if you are either the lane guy or the mechanic or whoever takes care of the lane machine if if people i'm sure it's not just us it's everywhere you know everyone's going to say something but that one tip would just be uh, information 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 of as course, long yeah. as you can get that information to them and then you have a good from a reliable source from a reliable source yeah don't right. just pull it from uh, jimmy.com bowling <laughs> superstar whatever yeah get it from like an actual but, company uh, that does it a lot of the times when we do these seminars like the one that we do with kegel uh the one that i did with innovative you know that's a lot of these things that we do we have files though so when pro shops request them proprietors request them i'm more than happy to get out that information because we know it's correct and then you can take a slide out of that print it out customize it you know put it and put it out there and give that information out there, but at least you know where it's coming from. It's coming right. from the manufacturer. Um, it's something that we do a lot of time testing. Um, you know, so that's all you know, good information. But the one thing that I actually learned, uh, when they did the study with uh, PWBA versus the PBA, you know, basically women versus men, the way men break a pattern down is it's just broken and choppy all over the place. But when women bowl, they kind of all follow a, a similar path. So. And that's another thing going back to the league bowling. If you want to help everybody kind of get on the same page and break the lanes down more consistently, those are slides that I also have that I could show you. Yeah. And you can, they can actually visually see how the lane breaks down. And a lot of people don't realize what happens to the oil until they see it on a graph and they go, oh, look at that. During a regular night at league, you got that one guy throwing like a 10-year-old whatever ball, like oh, yeah. a five. Yeah. You got the guy that has the here. brand new, like, you know, big flare monster in the middle of the lane quarter. So you got five or 10 different people all playing different angles. And you got me throwing right. everything. And there, it, exactly. And there's always and then, that guy. Uh, that, one always guy that one guy throwing plastic, <laughs> that one dude just messing everything up throwing urethane. My goodness. So there you go, there's lane conditions. And that's from a dude who knows, this is what he does, this is his job. And just to, just to re, reinforce or whatever, it, it's just, if, if we're giving as much information as we can, we're also thinking about running a tournament on two different recreational patterns and have it like, uh, like you know, choose whatever, like pick you pick the pattern, like pick your poison, kind of a term, like a team tournament in August. Yeah. So that's an idea that we're kind of playing with. So Excited. it'll be, you can bowl on both of them. And then at the end, it'll still be some money and brackets and all that good stuff. We haven't officially announced it. I guess I just officially announced it right now. So we're doing that in August. And um, at the end of that tournament, we'll, we'll, we'll hand out, you know, the flyers to the teams and you guys pick the pattern for the next year. And maybe every summer, we could do like a fun, like, pick the house shot for the year. And it's open to any yeah. bowler. I mean, I think that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. You know, it's more innovative yeah. instead of just staying with the same thing over and over. Yeah, give them yeah. a choice. Yeah. Right. All right, then, a couple things get us hyped. The IQ Tour Emerald Astrophysics. A um, couple sentences about both balls. People are coming in. We're having the matchmaker in about an hour. Um, yeah, no, yeah. A lot of people are very excited about these bowling balls. Yeah. Give us, give us two, two, two of your favorite parts of these two new balls. I know it's very general. Well, it's really one main thing that I like about both of them, or I love about both of them, is the R2S, man. I mean, that's kind of, that's, that. uh, it's, we've used it on so many different pieces over the years, and I mean, whether it's sanded on a, uh, you know, step number three, or even, you know, want to gloss it up a little bit with some extra shine. It's just, they always read the lane correctly. They always roll so nice. I mean, that's honestly my number one favorite thing, but the, uh, honestly though, that IQ Emerald, the IQ Pearl is one of my favorite pieces back in the day and uh, so this, you know, reminiscing back to that and being a green, you know, I, I yeah. like it. I like it a lot. It looks, uh, it looks So is this good. the reboot? This is the reboot, right? Essentially, Basically, yeah. It's yeah. the same centripetal. Yep. Right, it's a low low de uh, density one. Yep, also, the C3, I believe. Yeah. I think it's a four pound block somewhere on there. Yeah, it's right around four, exactly. Four yeah. and then R2S once again. Yeah. So yeah. really, this is like the uh, like uh, just a relaunch of a of a classic. Absolutely. So instead yeah. of calling it a different name, because I know a lot of people and other, and I'm not gonna say anything bad. Like marketing is marketing. You gotta do what you gotta do. Cool. But um, there are and, and we, Storm is also guilty of it. They'll take something that. that they used once before, a core they used once before, and they kind of relaunch it as a brand new ball. Well, yeah. Where I feel like, in a lot of people that I talk to, it's more honest. Like you see Hammers doing it, you, uh, they brought back the, um, what's that, the uh, sauce? Oh, God. And you know, yeah, wait, wait, yeah. But you know what, though? From, yeah, years but ago. Yeah. That was a great ball. Yeah. So, and I'm happy that a lot of the companies are, are, are doing these throwback bowling balls. So instead of saying, here's a brand new ball where the, the same block you've been pouring for 10 or 12 years, just bring back that ball that everyone liked. And I feel like the demand from the customer is even higher when that happens. What always makes me wonder is why did the ball ever go away? If it was so, but it was no, so good. That's, Why'd you, that's yeah, just a side note. Yeah, we won't even, yeah, <laughs> even go down there. Uh, and so, um, 
Also, if so anyone that has bowled our Storm Summer Series, uh, it's this guy in Hank Brimmershine that has, uh, yeah, big yeah, class. Thank you, Hank. Hey! Hank and Mickey, um, they, they've been helping us, I mean, for years now, but um, this this summer, uh, Joe Johnson's right here too. Joe, you gotta get in here too, get over here. So, me and, Joe and I, because we're using proper grammar, Joe Come and I, um, we've been talking about doing some kind of new singles tournament something sure. and uh this guy right here if you watch the live stream from last uh, last tournament a couple weeks ago a ton of hearts just popped up for you hey look at that oh Good. man good for oh, me unbelievable it's uh, all for me. so <laughs> if uh, if uh thank you for everyone for uh, showing up for that tournament but yeah, if you watched uh, joe was on a live stream with me he was doing some commentating it was a super fun and great night had a lot of entries sorry about my voice again if i feel it fading away but um, since January, this guy's been like crunching all these awesome ideas together and throwing them at me and setting up a tournament's pretty tricky. It's, it's tough to do. It's our, we're a busy center. We have a lot of different events that we host. Uh, Ace Mitchell tonight, you know, Matchmaker right now. Awesome. Neba is in two weeks. Um, wow. So getting a, getting this finally Another done and series. seeing uh, seeing Joe's idea kind of like come to life. Um, I got to thank you a ton and also Storm and all the guys back there for for helping us out. And it's awesome. It's Boom. great. Thanks, I appreciate sir. it. And Dude. thank you to Mickey. Yeah, thank you. For good. all the sponsorship and for caring about like grass level. Yeah, man. Like grassroots level bowling is huge. Storm doesn't need to do it. I really appreciate a company coming down yep. and Me too, trying man. to help us out a little bit and get get the bowlers that don't normally get to bowl a tournament right. out in a tournament setting. When you see when you see a storm logo on something. Um, you know, I'm not trying to just blow smoke here, but you know, there's some there's some quality behind it, and we would never put out a product and use, you know, your guy's name and, and put something bad out. So I feel like when you see that, it does drive the the, the numbers and the excitement about the, the overall tournament too. So we're excited about it. Thank you again. Absolutely. Uh, thank you to Joe also. And uh, all right, get up. All right. All right, let's wrap this up. Thank Mark, you guys. <laughs> dude, you're awesome. Everyone out. Yeah, got it. All right, so. There's that guy, there's that dude, there's and here's Mark back again, and there's there's Matt, there's Matt. All right, so uh, we have, like I said, if you're at home watching this and you're getting out of work, start coughing and just tell your, <laughs> your uh, I feel kind of weird, I gotta go. Uh, the first squad's at 4 p.m., second squad's at 5 p.m. Um, the more open squad will be at 4 because we have uh, a bunch of more guys coming in for the 5 o'clock that have the Ace Mitchell event going as well. So if you have already reached out to me, I have your spot saved. That's not an issue. But if anyone's uh, planning on walking in, try to get in a little bit earlier so we can get you. Uh, we have we have eight lane, 10 lanes done. So that should be that should be pretty decent, right? I mean, it's, you know, 40 people or 30 people or whatever it is. So uh, come out for that. The, the next Storm uh, Summer Series will be the, uh, what's the 28th? Friday the 28th. Yep. We're adding a $15 um, bonus entry for a scratch division. So you can still uh, throw 50 bucks in there, bowl the handicap part of it, but we are going to be paying out either a, I know some people don't really want a Neva spot, they really have the money, but we, we do have a Neva spot available. So if you win the scratch segment of that tournament or that event, even if you win the whole thing, you'll get the money, the jersey, and your Neva spot if you want it. So come check that out. Neva's also that weekend. Brian Bogosian is having a 50 and uh, 50 and over four game series on Saturday. Woo, crazy. There's a ton of stuff. Um, I, I haven't I haven't done my video yet because I'm like all messed up right now. So I'm delayed on my IQ and Astro Phase video, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, my nerve thing gets right and my voice gets right and yeah, but we love doing it, and that's why we didn't skip it. And get down to Grace Mitchell if you are planning. There's still some open spots. Boom. Anything else? Yeah. Yeah. No? That's it. We're good? All right. Hey, we love you guys. Thanks for always watching. We'll see you next Friday, and maybe we'll see you this weekend. Uh, yeah. There it is. Good job, buddy. And that was it. That was Friday Live from uh, June 14th. That was two Fridays ago, and yes, that is a Spice Girls poster in my room right there. Because come on, dude. Spice Girls. Let's go. Please hit the likes, subscribes, notifications, all that good stuff. The IQ and the astrophysics video will be out soon. I am recovering still from crazy thing going on right now. Can't even throw a ball. So I got a bunch of good footage from the matchmaker and a bunch of people's opinions on the balls. So I can't wait to get that out to you guys. Thanks for hanging in. See ya.